All right, we're gonna do another mask today, a uh, different kind of mask. We're gonna do a scream mask. I'm gonna attempt to. Um, obviously, I've never done one before. I'm very new to this mask rehauling and stuff, but I wanted to do a Scream 6 rehaul. This is just a cheap Walmart Scream mask. It was nine bucks. So I think this is about the cheapest you can get besides like the hard plastic ones you find at Dollar General. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna see what I can do with this. This isn't my own way of doing it. I've, I watched YouTube tutorials, so I'm gonna use what, I, what I've seen on those, use some different techniques, and uh, we're gonna try it out and see how good I can make this look. Okay, I'm gonna try to talk through this one a little more because I don't really know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna try to explain. Um, but from the videos I've watched, the tutorials, people go over it with the C6000 black. So that's what we're gonna do first. We'll do one pass through, I believe it is. We might do two, we'll see what it looks like afterwards. trying to make it go through all of these creases. Turn around it a little bit. This should give it that aged look if it does what it's supposed to do. I'm trying to pat it on there. I don't really want to smear it. I think I think the padding will give it more of a decay look rather than smearing it on there. Just want to make it to where there's no white really showing through. I want it to be completely grayish. Alright, I think that looks pretty good. I got pretty good coverage over it. Um, give that a few minutes to dry. This stuff dries really quick, so um, let that dry a little bit and then we're gonna go over with go over it with some white. Alright, it is pretty dry now. Um, it's not smearing, so we're gonna go ahead and take a paper towel and dab some white on there. We don't want it to be completely gray like this. So we're gonna dab white on there super lightly. Uh, we don't want it super heavy, but here we go. Alright, that looks pretty good to me. We got full coverage, so let that dry for a few minutes. Alright, next what we're going to do is a gray wash over the mask. Uh, I'm going to use this pewter gray. Uh, focus there. I'm going to use this pewter gray. So what we're going to do is mix it with lots of water because we want it real runny. we got to make sure to have a fresh towel available so we can dab it off as soon as we put it on there. We don't want it uh, super dark. Just want to make sure to get it real watered down and we'll just wash it. Just want to do little areas at a time because we got to make sure to dab it off. I want it to be real light. This will help to the aged look. And most people I've watched have done this before the white. And to be honest, I, I forgot about it, so this is the reason we're doing it after the white. So if you're doing this, then you might want to do it before you put on the white. Probably make it look better. Should 
get in all them crevices. That made it look a lot better. I really like what that did to it. A few more spots over here, but I was kind of messy with it. I'm getting paint all over the cape here, so I'm gonna figure out how to wash that off, but um, I think that looks really, really good. So we're gonna let that dry. All right, this next part, I kind of messed up. I didn't buy the right paint for this part. Um, it's for like in between the creases right here. We're gonna add some color for decay and stuff like that and around the edges and stuff. Um, you're supposed to get some type of yellow and I forgot to buy it. So I kind of just made this mixture right here. It's got a little bit of black and brown and white and gray, uh, mostly brown though. And we're gonna substitute it for that. I think it'll still look pretty cool. And then we just got some plain brown here so if I need to touch it up with that. So we're just gonna mix some, some water with that and we're gonna see what it looks like. I think it'll still look cool enough. I'm sure the yellow uh, goldish look would look better, but I just forgot to buy it. So we're gonna roll with what I got and see how it looks. The water's making it look a little bit grayish, which is fine. We're just gonna go through these creases. It's just gonna be kind of a repeat until I'm satisfied with what it looks like. And I don't think that looks that bad, actually. Again, I'm just winging this. Uh, I have no experience really making masks besides what's on this channel. Looks pretty good. here in this little corner. Leading down. I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. I don't want it to be oversaturated. I just want it to look cool. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop myself right there before I do too much. That looks pretty good, honestly, in my opinion. So we're gonna start with the actual damage and cracks, uh, but I'm gonna let this dry. All right, next up, we're gonna use this wood burning tool. Um, I bought it at Walmart in the craft section for 15 bucks. And I've never used one before. This will be my first time using it, but from what I've seen, this gives the best um, crack effects to the Scream 6 mask. It gives the best damage effect effects. They look the best, so I'm gonna go off this picture right here uh, on my phone and I'm just gonna try to match it up best I can and we'll see how it turns out but I've never used one of these before I hope it works and let's do it Okay, that was pretty sketch, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna try to clear out these holes. Uh, the burn marks didn't really leave it clean, so I'm gonna try to wipe these out, and then we can paint inside of them. 
Actually, I think it's going to be hard to clean these out, but we'll see what I can do. Okay, so I'm going to use this pewter gray and black mixture to go in between all the cracks that I just made and make them pop out real good. I couldn't really clean out the cracks that well with the burn marks. Um, they really didn't want to go anywhere. I don't know how people do it and leave it clean <laughs> like they do. So we're going to fill in these cracks and see what it does to it. <laughs> 